Hi everybody, welcome back to Kamoya Designs. I'm Sandra and today we're going to plan August 2020 in my bullet journal. So I do use also this um, doodle planner from Amanda Richley that I'll link below, but for when I wanna actually physically make my own, I'm gonna show you in this old bullet journal uh, my tools and my basic monthly plan layout. What I always do first is a monthly spread. So I start out with writing the month, usually with a large brush pen in calligraphy or hand lettering style. This is called modern calligraphy, I believe. Um, and I typically have like a small calendar below. I don't normally space out the days like this, but I just went with it because I started on the wrong place. So I just kept going. Um, that's the thing about bullet journaling. It's very individual, it's very personal. Mistakes really don't matter. I mean, it's yours. You can make as many mistakes as you want. Um, and there's always a way to kind of go with the flow and adjust if you make an error. So it's really not a big deal. On the left side of the monthly spread, I typically do a monthly quote or, um, you know, something fun. Just It's practice for me, but it's also um, something to just kind of anchor my cover page. It's not necessary, but I'm just going to show you what I like to do. Um, obviously, there are tons of Plan With Me videos on YouTube that you can find and see examples of what everybody does. Um, but this is sort of my go-to. So even when I don't really know what to do, I always make this quote page and I always make um, the monthly sort of spread looking like this. I decorate the calligraphy um, sometimes by making it like an ombre effect and putting in some shadows. And here for the decoration for the month or for the monthly theme, I chose bubbles just because it's like something quick and easy. And um, I was honestly just trying to get done before the kids woke up from their nap. So this isn't my best work, but <laughs> it's really just an example to show you and sort of how I do it. So here I skipped a page because I'm using um, Loisterm 1917 um, for this journal, but it has really, really thin pages. Um, so in the bullet journal community, you'll find a lot of people really love this journal. I don't know um, if it's because it's kind of, you know, the known one, the trendiest one. I'm not sure. Um, I tried it for the sake of forming my own opinion. and. In the end, I prefer the Dingbats. Um, I'll link actually the one that I did use the year before, or I think the year after this one, um, just because the pages were thicker, even though they're not as white. Um, but the marker pens that I like the most, they bleed through to the other side on this journal. Well, they don't bleed always, they ghost. So you can kind of see them on the flip side when you turn the page. And I like to fill both sides of the page. So it's not the best journal for me this one um, but it's definitely something I recommend trying if you want to get into bullet journaling a lot of people really like this journal I say just try a bunch until you're comfortable with the one that works for you and then just go from there so real quick here I just made a to-do page um, so I split the left side on a to-do this month and a shopping list so these are my go-to's every month I make these specific spread um, portions just because I always need to write some stuff down and um, sometimes if I'm just sitting work, working on my journal I remember something and this is the best place for me to write it in and for my habit tracker i'm not tracking a lot of habits this time around but that's also because i'm already tracking them in my doodle planner but as an example um i can split the page in two as well for my trackers but typically i'll have on my left page my habit trackers and i'll usually have like nine of those mini calendars and i just counted the dot spaces to make it the number of days and i shaped it in the same shape of this month um, and then on the right i will have a mood tracker similar to this but it will fill up the whole page and for this i just drew 31 bubbles and i put a little color legend at the bottom and i will fill in each circle with the corresponding color based on how i felt on that day 
and for the tracker i am just highlighting the days where i was able to complete that habit and i just mark them with the purple Lastly, what I do is my weekly spreads and my favorite is the eight box style. I don't know really how to explain. It's like a vertical, they're vertical boxes. And I believe the space, um, the dot space grid here is, I'm gonna say 11 by 17 or something like that. I'm pretty sure that's what I used. Um, and I have one box for each day and the last box is for extra notes or um, if I had tasks that I wanted to write or just little things I need to remember. I don't use a ruler. I get this question quite often, um, how I make my straight lines. Um, honestly, it's just a trick that I learned from Amanda Richley. Again, you can tell I'm obsessed with her channel, but um, she does this as well. It's just when you pull the line towards you so when you draw the line where the paper the pen is coming towards you it makes it a little easier to keep your hand steady so i just marked my days and added a little bit of my decoration and um, just letters for each day and i wrote the date right next to each letter so i started with um august 3rd so i'm sorry this is a little bit late i normally would have posted this last week but i will blame the kids for this time <laughs> and i forgot this page um before um but i like to do this large calendar right after my monthly covered page so for two reasons i know it's like okay how many calendars do you need sandra all the calendars i need all the calendars guys that's just how my brain functions um no so i normally make a really large one where i can write like big things so i write birthdays i write like important appointments i'll just make a little note about them here if i had a trip i mark it on the main calendar which is this big calendar here i would not write everything on there i kind of use like a color code sometimes i'll use a highlighter and just highlight all the days you know in a row if i'm gonna be out of town which lately <laughs> there's not a lot going on not much of that going on but um that's the reason i use the larger one because i want to be able to see the whole month at once and be able to plan out exactly everything that's going on um, and I didn't write that down here because I track it in my other journal but I on the left side where there's a little space I sometimes do a social media tracker but for me it's because I'm a content creator and I'm on social media so I kind of track my progress on each of the platforms that I'm on each box is six by six I believe yeah six by six dot grid space I um, mean, normally I write these with a much, much lighter marker. So it looks almost like a watermark and it's just like a faded number in the background. So that when I write something over each box, um, then it's still very easy to read. But for this one, that's pretty much it. I finish off with a few decorations on the calendar page and then I'm gonna do a quick flip through of all the pages. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and you'd like to see more videos like this from me. Um, leave me comments below for anything else you'd be interested in seeing and I'll see you next time. Bye!